when you're a top pick like you were and losing Aaron and everything that's gone into this defense, is there, you feel any pressure? No, there's no pressure. I mean, I got the best of my D-line. If I'm not having the best day, you know, I bet you Kobe will, Fisk will, B.Y. will, Hoyt will, Bobby will. Somebody's going to have a great day, so it's going to be, I'm not worried at all. I got my brothers to have my back. Jared, has there been one person you sort of bonded with during camp? I think it's definitely B.Y. You know, he's probably the person that I gravitated towards the most. You know, somebody that, like, you know, he had a great season last year, especially, you know, going on his rookie campaign and coming back, he's going to have another great one. So he's probably the person I bonded with the most. Also, Hoy and, uh, you know, B. Jack, you know, those three people that I probably spend my most time around. Jared, what's your feeling like? I mean, all the practice, everything, that, you know, the year, now it's game week. What's your feeling? I'm excited for it. I mean, it's first game, there's nothing else to say about it. It's going to go out there, I'm going to do, you know, what I did in college and trying to make a big impact at the next level. Has anyone talked to you about that? I mean, I don't know you well enough to know how you control your emotions on game day, how you use them positive or negative. You certainly had the first in college or a bowl game in college. Is there anything to, to draw comparison to? I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, we played LSU every year. That's the biggest game. You know, then you got Florida, then you got Miami, where there's a lot of bad blood in between us. But, I mean, you can't compare that to the league. It's going to be a whole other level and everything like that. But you just got to have a short memory. You had a good play, forget about it. You had a bad play, forget about it. You had an okay play, forget about it. It's about the next play. What's it like just preparing for your first NFL game? Obviously, you dreamed of reaching at this, reaching this level, and now that it's finally here, how does it feel? I mean, it feels good. You know, I mean, obviously, I have, you know, the person I've been leaning on the most that way is Fist to also get, you know, kind of the way he's preparing for it. Because, you know, preparing in college and preparing here is kind of a different thing because these guys are well-versed, well, you know, rounded in the league, like I said before. So it's, it's, it's exciting. How does Woodland Hills compared to Tallahassee? You see me right now. <laughs> you see me right now. It, it's something different. It's something different. How do you describe the difference this week looking at film compared to any other week that you've been in this locker room or with this team, rather? You know, usually the past weeks, whether it be camp or OTAs, you're watching film on yourself, right? You're watching film on practice. You know, where can I get better, you know, plays, reps, things like that. Well, this week, not only are we watching film on practice, but we're watching film on our opponent. Yeah. You know, we have someone to plan for, someone to game plan for. So, you know, watching individual players, watching different schemes that they do, and really just locking into those details. When you say lock in, for you, every player is different. Some guys really build off of it. Some guys need the headphones. Some guys do all sorts of things. For you, what do you do on game day to know you're ready? Well, you know, uh, throughout the week, you know, I just take it one day at a time. You know, I watch a lot of film, man. Uh, break each individual player down so I know on Sunday or Monday or Thursday, you know, I'm prepared and I did everything I can. Now I can just go out there and play ball, play fast, and do what I do, you know. So uh, that's, that's really it. We, had, we asked Jared earlier, I mean, obviously you dreamed of playing in the NFL. Now you're preparing for your first game. May feel different once, you know, the, the moment finally arrives Sunday. But what's it like even just preparing for that to begin with? You know, it's really still a dream come true, but really just, like I said, locking into those finer details, making sure I watch a lot of film so when Sunday's ready, when my number's called, you know, I'll be ready. I know what they're going to bring, and I can just, you know, do me. I don't want to bury the lead, but Michigan, Texas this week, who yeah. do you like? Oh, I, I, I like my boys. You know, we're in the big house, 110,000 strong. You know, they had a nice little warm-up game last week. You know, they're probably watching film right now, looking at things they can fix, but uh, it's going to be a good game. Just health-wise, how are you feeling? You know, obviously we're dealing with that shoulder. How are you feeling at this point? Well, I feel great, you know. I'm out practicing, out doing everything I need to do, everything they brought me here to do. So it feels good to be back out there with the guys, getting back to it. And uh, we're excited for this week. Not only are you back out there, but you're back out there at center after you know being initially brought in as a left guard. I, I know it's not a new position to you because of your college background and all those things, but what's it like, you know, switching positions and now taking that on? I mean, for for us, like even in past years, we've always like it's never just one guy that's the center. You know, you see NFL, things happen, guys get hurt. So, you know, we all prepare like we have to play a different position. So making the transition was really seamless. Uh, Wendy's kept us sharp and on top of things, so Whatever, wherever they need me, you know, I'm ready. How do you, um, for you personally, like with Reggie in this heat, Gatorade water, what's the biggest thing for you to make sure you're not drained come Sunday? Um, I mean, this heat wasn't too bad, you know, it's dry. No humidity, no humidity. It's different when you got humidity, but like that Houston, Houston 105 was a lot different than this 105. But, um, you know, they stay on top of things. You know, we got a good little cool down session and, um, you know, 
things like this will only help you in the long run. Because when we get to Detroit, I've seen the weather. It's supposed to be like 66 degrees and it's indoors. You know, it's pretty cool. It's not this. So this makes it a little harder, but how they, how they take care of it, how they treat us with the reps, how they, you know, let us cool down, give us rest is perfect. Sean's talked about how you feel like center is more of a natural position for you. Like, what is it about it that makes you feel yeah. so comfortable? Um, I mean, my first ever position when I played football was center. Um, I've always played center, and it just so happened that sometimes we needed a guard more than we needed a center, so I played guard. Um, I went down in prior years. Had we not had a all-pro and pro bowl center, I probably would have played center, you know. So it's just what it is. You were on the other side of everything last January. Yeah. What was that home environment like for you, and what are you yeah. feeling going yeah. back there, then the other side? It, it's you know, it's, it's it's a crazy environment. It's 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 up there with the the best of the best, and you know they're coming off a, a good year, and you know that's kind of like a, a little low key rivalry building up. So it's gonna be fun. Is it strange at all being on the other side yeah. of it now? Um, yeah, it'll be strange, but you know I've dealt with something like this before, like. When I transferred from Rutgers to Ohio State, going back to Rutgers, it was not as hostile of an environment, but, you know, it's still different. You know those guys through and through, you know, their personal life, their own field life. So it's a little more, per not personal, but, you know, it's a little more to it. None of us have played center, I'm assuming. Um, <laughs> what's the biggest, I always hear quarterback of the offensive line. What's the biggest transition? Um, just being more vocal. you got to be more commanding, you know. you got to make the call. you got to direct. The, the guys where to go so that's probably the biggest transition physically you know it's not much, too much different you know still blocking a guy still sliding you know same stuff just making calls now when when you came in in, in the spring were you always preparing as if this could be a possibility yeah, yeah that's i mean that's that's how you do most offensive line rooms you know you're always ha having guys ready who are backups or who could potentially play the position you know like I told him earlier, like it's never just like only the centers getting coached on how to be center. It's multiple guys, and that goes for guys who slide in from playing tackle, guys who slide out from playing tackle. It's, it's all interchangeable. You and Jonah switching positions. How did that come about, and, and how did you handle switching back over to left guard? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I had uh, some talks with McVay and stuff, and my, from my understanding, it was, you know, we want to put the uh, best five out there, which they are, and um, this was always, you know, a possibility that could have happened. Um, you know, we want to flex, you know, uh, what we can do, you know, because we know we have the guys to. Um, and right now, if we feel like that this is the best thing to do. Um, I'm very, it's exciting. It's exciting uh, to know that guys can switch around like that when you have someone like Warren who can go right or left or Joe, who last year went from guard to he played everywhere last year. And that's something that, you know, I, I pride myself in as well um, when making that move uh, from center to guard, guard to center. So. Do you have to mentally prepare yourself at all when you found out that you're making the switch? Uh, not as much as being told that I was going to play center, um, just because I, I played 17 games at guard. But um, I will say it's ha it has helped me out a lot, <laughs> and, um, just uh, with understanding, you know, uh, what we're trying to do. Because I remember last year I tried not to overcrowd myself with. Um, knowledge because I wanted to have the foundation of what I was supposed to do uh, and Coleman did a very good job with communicating the whole year which I relied on a lot <laughs> so when I got moved to center I tried to uh, take in as much knowledge as I can um, and it helped me out uh, at guard too so yeah. The finality of the way that season ended last year and which was a good year for you the way when it ends in a playoff game so quick was that at all motivating for you in the off season and going back? Yeah I mean that next day, I was, it was almost like, and this is sound depressing, but it's not. But like, I didn't know what to do. You know what I mean? Knowing that that team like ended, you know, my work, like what I'm supposed to be doing every day. So um, I know a lot of guys, you know, take it to the heart a lot. And you know, as someone who um, wants to win this game as much as anybody is McVay, and that motivates me as well. When you have a coach that wants to win that much, uh, motivates the players, and um, it's just exciting. It's going to be an exciting environment, um, especially with all the storylines going on, Jonah, you know, and the, the playoff game and all that stuff. So it'll be exciting. You said, you said McVay really wants to win. How do you, where do you see that show up? It just, uh, he has passion. That's just the type of coach he is. And um, I know how much this means to him, uh, having a great season. And you can just tell just in how he's, you know, talked to guys and when he presents stuff, it, he just has it, does it with passion. Um, and that's one thing that I admire about him because um, it takes a lot to, you know, to motivate guys. and 
from my understanding, you know, and looking around and, and seeing how practice went today, um, it, it is just it's an amazing feeling. You obviously grew up playing high school ball in Texas and the heat and humidity. Yeah. Um, and then I'm seeing guys getting on the scale. How is this heat and humidity? And for you specifically, do you have to make sure you do a cold tub, hydrate? Mm -hmm. What is it? Um, so I feel like when it comes to being a pro, you do a lot more. Um, and that's something that I can pride myself in uh, with trying to prepare more, which I probably could have done in college. But that's what, you know, learning yourself, you learn yourself a lot more. I've cold tub. I've done a lot more to prepare myself for the heat. Um, this, this, the humidity in the south is way different than the dry heat out here. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I, I was telling him that, you know, when we went to Houston, you know, a lot of guys were like, dude, this is terrible. And I'm like, so this is up my alley, you know? <laughs> but um, it, it's different. But I always try to stay hydrated because I don't want to have an instance where I'm out there and I feel sluggish. Um, so I want to give myself the best possibilities.